Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and we do a new project every week and this week we are doing hide and seek. Oh, peekaboo. <laughs> That's Kanan who's working our cameras. He'll tell me where to look. He'll ask questions. Sometimes we make jokes because we think we're kind of funny. That's true. We do think we're <laughs> um, This is a great um, project, a lot of layers, a lot of layers, so get used to getting uh, a lot of drying time done. If you have a heat gun, that'll be super helpful for you to use. You can use a blow dryer, just make sure it's on a low setting, and uh, maybe get some snacks ready. Yes, please. Because you're going uh, to be letting it dry a lot. I have okay. a Reese's Outrageous with me. Today. You do? Yes. It's upstairs. Oh, so you don't have it, no, like, I here. <laughs> when I said I had it with me, I was lying. <laughs> Okay, we're using four colors today. So our first color is Payne's Gray. Our second color is Yellow Ochre. Our third color is Orchid. And our last color is Space Blue. I'm using two paintbrushes, a round six and a round two. Uh, my round six is the Let's Make Art Classic round. Um, and I'm using a Princeton Heritage Round 2 because I could not find the Let's Make Art Round 2. Use what you have. Awkward. <laughs> both of these brushes are great brushes. You can find them on our website. I recommend both of them. They're they are both great brushes. They're nice. Also have a pencil handy and ready because we're going to be doing a little bit of drawing. And we're going to do this project in four-ish steps. So our very first step is we are going to do an even wash, a light even wash across the entire painting. Let that dry and draw, okay? Because we're gonna be drawing these leaves. Um, and then we're gonna paint, paint another layer. So it's like the same steps over again, over and over again, which is paint a layer, let it dry, draw. Let it dry, paint a layer, let it dry, draw. And we'll just keep doing that over and over until we build this up. And this is like a true, to definition, negative space painting. So you're avoiding what you've painted, you're going around what you painted previously. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, every, this is exciting. Yeah, every time you add a layer, you're going to be um, avoiding what you've previously drawn. Okay. And what you newly drew. And if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. I understand. Just stick with me you'll get it um, but that should happen in about four to five layers you can see how many layers i've done here by how many different colored leaves i have so i have one two three four and then that fifth layer was just this pure dark value okay wow cool. so you can have as many layers as you want or as little layers as you want this is totally customizable to what you guys want to do the biggest thing to remember is to increase your values as you go, okay? So you wanna start off with light values and then every time you add a layer, add a little bit more value to that layer and that's how you get that, that darkness. If you do a light layer, like a light value, after you do this like really dark blue, not gonna show up. In Keenan speak, you won't be able to see add it. more paint. There we go, yes. <laughs> okay, so our very first job and this is, you can even leave it white if you want to, but I wanted to have a little bit of color on my first, on my lightest uh, leaves. So I did a wash. So grab your round six. Oh, we got to do our oath. Holy shnikes. Came in. Okay, I got distracted by thinking about the negative paint. <laughs> okay, raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. All right, let's take a breath because I feel kind of like, we got to do this. We got time. We're just hanging out. Me and you and Keenan. I'm here. <laughs> just watching you paint. <laughs> And we're going to start by doing our first layer. Now, if you have a larger paintbrush than a round six, I highly suggest you use it. If you only have a round six as your largest, it's not a huge deal. This wash that we're doing across our entire paper does not have to be even or smooth because we'll be covering like 90% of it up with more paint. So it's not a huge deal. It's just about time. 
Um, I also taped my paper all the way around because one, we're gonna do a lot of layers so my paper is gonna buckle a bit, and two, I want a clean edge, so. All right, so to get the color that I'm looking for, I'm gonna mix a little bit of yellow ochre with a little bit of orchid, and it's just gonna turn into like this, like kind of, like kind of peachy color. I want it to be a little bit more yellow than peach though. Now you can do one of two things. You can just take your paintbrush and just start adding that, okay? Just spread the color. And it's really a light value. You notice how light that is compared to my white paper. Don't go dark right away. Or if you're like me and you're like, do I really need to spend all this time doing this with my round six? Grab a paper towel and you can use your paper towel to do an even wash across your painting. What? Kind of like the sea sponge. We're just learning about this now? I feel like I did this in one other tutorial, but maybe you weren't filming with me. Maybe it was Michael. What? Yeah. Now, paper towels are absorbent, so it's gonna pick up a lot of color too. But I kind of, we give you a lot of paint um, in these subscription boxes, so I'm not worried about using too much color. I kind of just want to get it done a little bit faster. Yeah. You know I'm what I mean? I look at it like you get to paint mix more. Yeah. Mix paint more. So you see how like quickly it is for me to like just do... Yeah. It's also okay if the colors kind of change across. Wow. Like, ba-bam. That's super cool. Yeah. Other added benefit, it might actually help the drying time. Yeah, it might. Also, don't rub too hard though, because obviously, um, you'll start to get like little paper towel pieces rubbed off because uh, this is paper and you've dipped it in water and paint. So it will start to degrade, huh. but just don't rub it too hard. So now I have like a light wash across my <laughs> painting. Well done. <laughs> Entire paper in like 10 seconds. Um, and then we're gonna let this dry. So after you've let that dry, we're gonna draw our first leaves. So, that's pretty dry. Now again, how big these leaves are is completely up to you. How many you do is totally up to you. Um, I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna do two, two to three. Uh, actually, I've done up to four. I've done two to four branches drawing per layer depending on what spaces I wanted to fill up. But just so you guys know, there's not a right or wrong way. Just play with it, just try it. So um, just know that whatever area you do not draw these leaves in, you're gonna have to paint around, okay? So just keep that in mind. A lot of painting is involved in this project, which is great, because we're into painting. Yes, we are. That's why, that's why we do this. I mean, that's why I got here. That's why I came here. So. I actually found this project to be really therapeutic because after you draw, you do a layer, you let that dry, you draw, you, you know what I mean? Yep. It's, a, it's not as like getting fine details, it's more just like, almost like um, a coloring book a little bit that we're making. Oh, custom made coloring page. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to start with my leaves. Now, there are many different types of leaves and shape types, things like that. Of course, you guys can do something else besides leaves. I chose leaves because I like them. And when I do leaves, I like to start with a narrow bottom so they come to a point, they widen out, and then they come to a point at the top, okay? And then I just do the other side. And then I'm gonna draw my stem and I just have it coming out from the bottom left-hand corner. If you wanna make your leaves longer, go for it. Like, honestly, don't stress too much about this part, okay? Now, I remember the very first tutorial I ever taught, all the purple flowers, um, we had some friends on there that painted and they were having a hard time with their leaves. They said their leaves kept looking like pickles. 
<laughs> so if that's happening to you, if you're getting pickly leaves, you need to do two things. One, you need to make them wider in the middle. Two, you need to have them go to a point, okay? Because if you don't do that, here, this is a pickly leaf. See how that kind of looks like a pickle? Yep. Yeah. So there are leaves that are shaped like this, so it's not a big deal. If that's what you're going for, great. You're nailing it. Um, but if you're getting frustrated by that, don't get frustrated. You can just change the shape. So I did one, and I'm going to do another one coming down this way. Just kind of following my reference photo here. And I usually always like to start, when I draw leaves, I like to draw my very top leaf first and then draw my stem and the side leaves because I like to know compositionally how far I'm going. Where sometimes if I just start with my stem, like let's say I started with my stem first, this is where my stem ended, and then I have to do a leaf on top of that. So then it changes where it ends. And compositionally, I could maybe, maybe possibly make it longer than I wanted to because I didn't make it the height that's going to be right from the beginning. Does that make sense? So here, like for example, here's my painting. Let's say I want a leaf to come out to this area, okay? This is the farthest I want it to go. So I'm gonna start with my leaf first because the top of my leaf on my top leaf I know is the end. Mm. That's how tall it's going to be. Let's say I wanna do a leaf here and I want it to go here. I want it to stay in this general direction. But I do the stem all the way out to there. Then it will actually be longer than where I want it to go. You see what I'm saying? Yep. That's why I like to start with my top leaf first because I know that however long or tall that is, that's the longest or tallest it will be. And I won't kind of like draw myself into a corner compositionally of like, oh shoot, now that looks too big for that space or too long or something. Smart. Now, I'm gonna draw darker for you guys because one, it's okay to draw darker in this since we're painting all around our drawing. Like, you're not going to see those pencil lines through it. And also, I want you guys to kind of see what I'm doing, so. <laughs> That's helpful with yeah. videos. And if you want some of these leaves to have, like, stems coming off from the main stem, if they run into each other, that's fine, too. Just be aware that if you overlap them, this pencil line will show, though, because we're not painting where the leaves are. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to respond with that. You got it. You nailed, nailed it. it. Do I need to redraw these? Maybe just a couple of them to see the area, like the farthest point out. Okay. And how wide. Now, I know that we're freehand drawing in this, and that can be super intimidating, but if we break it down into shapes, you guys can absolutely do this. As Keenan and I have previously joked before, leaf shapes are kind of like eyeball shapes. Or almonds. Or almonds. Or leaves. Or mouths. Or mouths. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like really pointy footballs. Oh yeah. Got some nice spin on the football. Yeah. Perfect spiral, as they say. <laughs> so you guys can do this, all right? I know it seems a little bit scary, but take a deep breath. Know that you can do hard things, and remember that, at the very least, it's a piece of paper. So the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to paint this or draw this and be like, ooh, I don't know about this, and throw it away. And that doesn't seem that bad, actually. Yeah. That's not a deal breaker for me. I'm okay with being willing to mess up a painting in order to have some fun while painting it. Yes. You know? Well, okay. Now we're ready for our second layer. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to mix another, like a little bit more of the orchid and the yellow ochre together just to get a different value because we want it. So if you look at my reference photo, this is the color that I'm kind of going for. 
I want it to be different enough from this that it will stand out, okay? And if you're still not quite sure how I'm getting these leaves, just hang on there with me. You'll get it because it's not super clear yet. So if you're feeling lost, you're not alone. All right, so now I'm going to take this new color that I mixed. Make sure it's a different color than what is um, already on your paper. It could be a different color or different value. And I'm just going to paint around what I drew. Now we do have some pretty thin stems drawn, like my stem is just a single line. So I'm just going to paint on either side of where that line is to make a stem. If it's more helpful for you to actually draw your stem in instead of just do a line, then go ahead and do that. Not a big deal, okay? So you're gonna be filling the entire space of this painting. And remember, it's okay if it's not perfectly even wash because we're gonna be painting right on top of this layer as well. So if the, if the round six is the largest you have, that's not a problem. It's just gonna take a little bit more time. I painted this entire thing with the round six because I wanted to make sure that you guys can do it. If you have a larger brush to fill in these larger areas, you can go ahead and utilize that brush. Remember to keep picking up water though, it just makes it easier for that paint color to spread. Make the color go a little bit longer. And again, as long as it's a different color from what we already laid down, you're good to go. The nice thing about rounds too, is if you're getting kind of in between these leaves here, and you're doing some really thin work, you are welcome to grab your round two to use this, or just do light pressure and use more of the tip on your round six. Whatever you guys feel comfortable with. I feel pretty good about being able to get a point with my round six. What? Oh my gosh, I just had a freak out that this wasn't a round six. <laughs> did, you, did you see me be like- You stopped <laughs> immediately. Like, I like being able to get a point with my round six. <laughs> That's what was going through my head. This is a round six. That's what we're using. <laughs> uh, so I feel good still using my six. If you're not quite there, that's totally okay. Go ahead and use your round two. Also, as I'm kind of filling in the rest of this around my leaves, where it's just kind of more empty space that I'm painting, um, I'm going to do it fairly quickly. I'm not going to focus too much on making sure it's perfect or pretty or even or anything like that because again, this, this entire thing gets paint over, painted over. So um, very little of this layer is actually going to show through. So this might be a really great exercise. I know that in previous tutorials, we've talked about kind of timing yourself or working quickly. Um, this might be a really great one to see like, gosh, I wonder how fast, if I could just like, if I just painted really quickly, how fast can I fill up this paper? This might be a great project to try that with, simply for the fact that it's gonna be hidden. The only parts of this layer that are going to show are when we draw the leaves on it and we paint around those leaves. That's it. What if you plan a design inside the leaves as you paint? Talk more. What do you mean? I'm thinking like a really heavy contrast color that's not obnoxious but some kind of, either it's the veins of the leaves that you leave there behind mm. in that different color. Mm. That would be cool. I don't know how to do that, but I can see it, so. 
I'm gonna need someone else to, <laughs> to do it. Can someone else please do that for Kanan? Now, as we add more layers of leaves and we're painting around them, it might be a little bit tricky to not paint over an area, <laughs> but um, just try and be a little bit more um, aware the more we paint that you will have to pay. Like right now, I don't have to pay like super close attention because I'm like, yeah, I'm just painting around the leaves. I got it. But when we're on layer like four and there's like five different colored leaves to paint around, you have to like, your brain has to be like in this to understand to not paint an area you're not supposed to. You know? I think so. This You'll is my see first it. time experiencing a true negative painting. I'm really excited. Yeah, the negative paintings that we have done before, we pretty much just have done one layer and uh. painted around our subject and then painted the subject with a little bit of detail. This, we're doing a lot of layers to make a true negative space painting. Cool. So um, that's a, a, the big difference between what we've done before and what this is. But I would say they still both qualify. And you can see um, I have some hard edges here. These are blooms. That's because I'm painting this section by section. They all have different drying times, which is why I'm getting these hard edges. Um, if you're new to watercolor, it's very normal. So don't get frustrated. If you are someone who just can't stand them, um, what would help you tremendously, especially in this instance, is getting a larger brush, maybe even like a wash. I can show you guys. Okay. Let me get a wash. Okay. This is a three quarter inch wash. And it just makes me fill in the space faster because of how big and flat it is. And then because it's not around, it's easier to get even. And by even, you can see here that I'm not getting those hard edges. This color is kind of being, um, evenly dispersed across this paper. Now the hard thing with washes is when it comes to painting around areas, it's trickier to do that because it's totally flat. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that's where around is really handy because you can do um, paint around areas. But look how quickly I'm able to fill in that space and how evenly I'm able to fill in that space with a wash. I love the hard lines. I, I mean, you guys know me. I love a good bloom. So they don't really bother me. Also, Canson paper has a tendency to bloom a little bit easier than um, other papers just because of how it's made. Um, so if you're still getting frustrated with your blooms, um, maybe try um, like an Arches or Stonehenge paper, Stonehenge's Legion. Um, just try a paper that's 100% cotton because this is not 100% cotton paper. And I think the how it's made, the consistency of cotton um, makes it a lot easier to get smooth, finishes instead of these hard lines. If you like the hard lines like me and Kanan, you're using the right stuff, you know? Then you're living life right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so this is a great comparison actually. Here's my round six wash. Here's my three quarter inch flash flat wash so you guys can visually see the difference there. So if you're really interested in painting landscape or skies or things like that, get yourself a flat paintbrush. It's going to make your life a lot easier. We have those on the letsmakeart.com. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. So if you need them, you can just add that to your next order. A couple different brands actually. Yeah. So you can choose. And um, also, if you had a bigger round, like I think we sell up to like around 
30 or something crazy. But yeah. um, uh, bigger brushes just fill in larger spaces faster and easier. So if you didn't have a wash, but you had like around 16 or something, go ahead and use that guy. Um, it'll make it easier. Now what we do is we wait for this to dry. And then when it's dry, we'll draw our next two leaves and then paint the next layer. Okay? Sweet. So let it dry. Okay, so once your painting is dry, I still have some wet areas right here, um, but that's okay because I'll just, I'm drawing away from, those, away from those areas. And I'm going to draw my second layer of leaves. Okay, so you can see here that I drew this and this. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Coming in from the right hand side, I'm going to start by. I just realized I covered the picture in picture. I'm going to put that back. Drawing in, and you can draw dark. And actually, when you get like near the very end, when we're working in like almost black, it might even be nice to have a pen so you can see it. Because mm. this pencil might not show up on that second to last layer. Would it be too risky to use a white gel pen? Mm, I don't know. The white gel pen, can you paint over that? I have no idea. I don't know either. Somebody let us know. <laughs> Please do the research for us. <laughs> Please do my job for me. <laughs> <laughs> And again, um, these leaves don't have to be perfect. I also kind of noticed that with this one, I started with these leaves being pretty large, and then as I added layer on layer, they got a little bit smaller. Well, that's okay. Just be aware of that. Just try and be like purposeful in whatever you're trying to do. Again, I feel like there are ru rules in art, but a lot of them is just knowing what they are so you can break them on purpose to get what you want to get or to communicate what you're trying to communicate. So it's not about like, that's why it's just nice to know what the rules are because then you're just like, okay, well, how can I like utilize this mm -hmm. to my benefit when I'm creating something? Okay, so I did my leaf down here. I'm gonna do the ones up here. And you'll see that they started to run into each other. That's okay. Um, they'll run into each other and overlap. You just gotta make sure that you avoid both of these leaves the next time you paint your layer. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Can they see these pencil marks? Yep. The side cam especially. Okay, cool. All right, now we're ready to add our second layer. Now this one, I made a little bit more purple by grabbing my orchid and a little bit of slate. Now if you wanna do just straight orchid, and this, see this is the color I'm starting to make here. See that purple? Ooh. I was on the wrong camera, but yes, I can see that purple. So that's kind of what I'm going for. Again, these colors are completely up to you because this is your painting and you're the artist. And here we go, just doing the same thing, painting over our layers, avoiding where we have drawn leaves. Pumpkins. Pumpkins? You could do pumpkins instead of leaves and do a Halloween party. <gasps> yeah. That would be cool. That would be neat. I don't know how you'd paint the pumpkin lines themselves, but... You could figure it out. Yeah, you could figure it out. You're smart. You guys are really smart and creative. And kind. We like you. Can you tell that we like you? Yeah. <laughs> So this is what I mean by making sure that your values are darker when you add layers. Because if I were to just use like mostly water 
and like a lighter value while I'm painting around this, it would actually just lift up the pink layer here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and kind of blend it? Yeah, so I'll show you. Let's say I'm like, okay, I'm ready to do my another layer and this is the amount of water and paint that I'm getting. That's not really gonna do much. And uh -huh. it could possibly even lighten the area. So that's not gonna stand out. This is standing out from this. So you just wanna make sure that it's different enough next to the previous layer that it stands out and that it will cover it. Which is why I've not only am kind of grabbing a little bit darker values slash more paint, I'm also switching the colors a little bit too because I want to make it super clear. But if you wanted to do this project just using one color, this would be a great exercise in values and understanding how much paint to grab because you'll, you're going to want to go darker every layer. Okay, so if you're someone who's really struggling with what that is and what that looks like, challenge yourself to do this project just using one color. Now, I say that maybe it would be best if you're struggling with this to do this project like in multicolors like this and then your second time around do it in uh, one color. Because when you have color options, it just makes it easier for you to tell the difference because they're colors instead of values. But if you really want to up your value game and get a better understanding, then just do this in one. Also, we have a project called Monochrome Mountains where um, it's a landscape using just values. It's mostly one color. That is a great exercise in values as well. Okay, so you see that I'm painting around my first drawn leaves and my second. So wherever you draw leaves, that's what you're painting around. What about the birch trees project? Ooh, yeah, the that's birch trees, that's a great one in values. And that's a really fun one in textures. Yeah. And I just mix colors along the way, you guys know me. Um, I don't stress if the colors are slightly different from my new mixture than from the previous one. Do you know what actually might be really cool? I just thought of this. Yes, I do, but what do you think? What if when you painted around this, you left a thin area, like instead of just going all the way to the line, I actually left a little bit of pink around the leaves. And then you loot, you like leave a little bit of color. Oh. So then the leaves would have like different colored edges. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That would be cool. I'm not going to do that, but hmm. if you guys want to do that, that might actually end up looking awesome. Got us all excited about the other leaf textures that you could have created, and then you said you're not going to do it. <laughs> That's well, kind of messed up. <laughs> I feel like I have an obligation to show you how to how I painted the actual thing maybe you that we're keep, advertising. Maybe you should keep your ideas. <laughs> that would be really cool to see. <laughs> To myself? To yourself. <laughs> Fair. Fair. <laughs> and just keep on keeping on. This is where I said that it's kind of therapeutic. Because after you draw your leaves, you're just filling in the spaces. And it's kind of nice to just kind of like zone out a little bit.
I need to have some like, I feel like I'm gonna like, I can feel my body relaxing the more I'm just like calming down and filling this in, which is kind of nice actually. Now we're jumping back into this. We had to stop filming for a second, so you'll notice that everything is kind of dry now. That's okay. With this project, it's not a big deal. Other projects are not as forgiving, um, but with this one, you can just pick up right where you left off and keep on going. And this is one of the, the lowest amount of times that we had to wait between stopping and starting again. One time we did a turtle, I believe, and we stopped filming and came back three days later and oh. finished it. Oh, yeah. You weren't even wearing the same clothes. <laughs> I wasn't. No, you had like a hat on. I just, like, hi. I just switched outfits halfway through the tutorial. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Good times. I know that some people are really good about um, like changing outfits. Yeah. You can absolutely tell what tutorials I filmed in what day because I just stay in the same clothes. There's no illusion here, my friends. Yeah, like this, uh, Jesse and Nicole, they generally change. Yeah. And then film a new tutorial. It's fine. I'm, I'm not, I guess I, there's nothing wrong with that. I guess I'm more apologizing to you guys that I don't do that. I do care. I just feel like you probably don't even notice those things anyway. Now you will. Now you will, because I literally brought attention to it and talked about it. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Let's move on to something else. Okay. So just, just keep on adding your color across. You can see that I am getting hard edges. I am getting blooms. A lot of that is because, well, one, I, the painting totally dried, and I'm starting it again. And... Um, I'm not really focusing on making a super even wash because again, it's not imperative to the success of this painting. And you can see that even where there's kind of different washes, you kind of get some really cool texture lines in your leaves. You see that? Yes. On this one? So I yes. am okay with that. That's as, what I was waiting for. I was excited about that. Yeah. As long as you're able to tell the difference between the layers, um, then it's actually kind of cool to have these little sections that are um, have the the bleeds and the washes, that kind of stuff. There we go. And remember that if you're getting like a rough texture when you're painting it means your paintbrush is too dry. That's how I can tell. So let's say I only pick up paint. Even though these are liquid, if there's not enough water on my brush and I go to paint and I'm getting this rough texture here, that is my brush telling me that it's, it's like dry. They're like, Thirsty. please give me some water. And it's like, all right, sorry brush. But you can also utilize that dry brush texture to your advantage. Um, I know Keenan already talked about the Birch Trees project. Um, if you go and watch that, you'll see that we actually use that rough texture for the tree area, like the birch part, like the bark. That's yes. what I'm trying to the say. Bark, the birch. The birch. Bark. The birch part of the tree. Also, if you are painting and you accidentally paint over an area like the stem, don't think that your painting is ruined, okay? It really, it's not the end of the world. And most of the time, like if you look at my reference photo here, you can see where I accidentally painted over stems. Like especially in this top one, there's like, those leaves are floating because I accidentally painted over the stems. Mm -hmm. Would you have noticed that unless I pointed it out to you? Nope, probably not. So like if that happens to you and you accidentally paint over a stem or a leaf, it's not the end of the world. So don't stress about it, okay? Don't let that stop you from, um, one, enjoying yourself and completing this project. I try to do the paper towel trick 
with these um, darker layers, like other layers besides our first one, just to see um, if it would help us on time. Because I know it does take a bit of time to like do layer after layer. So I thought, hey, I wonder if this would kind of like hurry it up. But I realized that the paper towel trick really is only effective on lighter values because paper towels absorb everything. Um, if you put a lot of color on there, you can't get a super dark value unless you put like an obscene amount of paint. And I don't want you to use all of your paint trying to do washes because you would probably have to use like a lot. Um, also, it really would only work in like where there's not leaves. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you just kind of slide it across. Um, it's almost too bulky. Yeah, it's too bulky to get the details. Um, and even if you use, if you have like a larger brush or a wash brush and you use that for the first couple layers, you'll see here that when we get to this last layer, you, you might not be able to use it because we're working around so many different leaves and stems. So just a little bit of a warning. Keenan. Yes, ma'am. When you, I know you have like a sketchbook and stuff and sometimes you paint with your daughters. Yep. Do you like listening to things? What do you, or do you like it silent? Or hmm. is it because you're with kids, you're not sure? So when I paint with the girls, I like to try and pick their brain to see what they want to paint and draw. Mm -hmm. So I like to use their creativity rather than my own so they don't get my ideas, they get theirs. Okay, that makes cool. sense? Yes. You don't want to like stifle what their ideas are with yes. yours. And I want them That's to feel I you. want them to feel that their ideas are good. Yeah, and just as valid as yours. Uh -huh, exactly. So I try to encourage them to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. They generally lose interest before I do, uh, but when it comes to when I paint alone, which is when I do my own like actual process, I like to listen to music, mm. but I also like silence. So it depends on how I'm feeling. Okay. Because the music will kind of get distracting, and then I'll like go find a piano and try and learn how to play that tune real quick. Mm, so then okay. I gotta I gotta do silence for painting and music for other stuff. Okay, that's fair. But I also need help finding ideas. So I look at pictures and I look for quotes to give me other inspirations. Yeah. I also am in mixture sometimes, um, and it just changes. Sometimes I really like listening to music. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I really like listening to audiobooks. Oh. Um, and other times, TV shows is another favorite of mine. Yeah. Especially like Friends. Yes. Friends is one of my favorite shows to listen to. Because it's just as funny listening to it as if you were watching it. Who do you relate with most on Friends? Phoebe, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Uh, but... There are times where I do like silence too. Especially I've noticed like... Um, as a parent, I feel like silence um, is a little bit more rare when you have younger kids, right? Which is not a good or bad thing. It, it just is what it is. So sometimes it's nice to have just a quiet moment and kind of just like let your mind wander. Especially this is a great, I'm talking about this because this is a great painting to do this too. Yeah. This is just a lot of repeated steps and filling in, and it's kind of wonderful to like, I don't know, listen to something that you've been wanting to listen to, or. I used to listen to this YouTuber. I don't know if he still has a channel or not, but he wrote his own, researched his own um, motivational speeches, essentially. Mm -hmm. And he put some slideshows of mountains and really just pretty landscapes mm -hmm. but what he would always say was the best part and he, he has a lot of videos one of them was stepping stones mm -hmm. and he talked about how you can't just go to a mountain and climb it when you get to the base of a mountain after a long distance you realize that you're only going to be able to go about 10 steps before you realize this thing's massive mm -hmm. but 
a thousand steps later, you'll look back and be like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Mm. And that was the gist. He says it way better than I do, but I love to listen to that sort of thing. Yeah. And I bet that'd be really useful for motivation, especially when you're trying something new. Yeah, and I know that sometimes when we're trying something new as well, because you talked about how, like, when you're doing your own stuff, sometimes you um, look for inspiration, which is, yeah. like, totally normal. Yeah. But also sometimes it can be overwhelming. I have noticed that people... A hundred percent. I can go look for inspiration and then get lost and yes. never do it at all. So something that I have learned about myself is that if I just consume consume, 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 then I get overwhelmed with all of my ideas that I end up spending all of my time that I was going to create at looking at what other people have created. And then I don't feel like fulfilled. And so like something that I talked to actually with Heidi, who works, who's our marketing director, is um, creation before, there's like a saying, it's like um, create before consume. So if you're feeling like creating and that's something you want to spend a little bit of time doing, um, make something first and then, then look for inspiration or, and then, you know what I mean? Because I, I think we get stuck at that part of just consuming and seeing what other people make. And sometimes it's not even good. Like sometimes it's really exciting because our minds are like, whoa, like look at what this person made that gave me this really cool idea I want to try this or whatever um other times though it can be really intimidating we get into the comparing game or we get into like only copying game which when we're first learning that's important to be able to understand um but then you get to a point where you kind of move past that I know that some people have asked me like how do you find your own style and something that I highly suggest doing is once you feel comfortable, like just in creating in general and knowing how to approach things, you stop consuming and stop looking at like your favorite artists who are doing the same thing that you are doing because you're going to tend to just replicate what they're doing. And I've done that. I mean, that's how I learned not to do that because that's what I was doing. Um, and I kind of got called out on it. And I thought like, okay, like if I, I wanna make sure that I kinda come up with my own style, so I need to avoid this artist completely. I can't keep looking at their stuff because even unconsciously, I'm copying what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point where I felt like I couldn't paint anything unless I was looking at what they've painted. Interesting. And so that's when I realized that I'm kind of relying on this person too much for my style. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so um, just because that's a question I get a lot, I want you guys to know that if you feel like you're getting close to that area where you're, you um, feel comfortable just creating things in general and have a strong idea of techniques, supplies, all of that stuff, um, maybe take a step back from, from looking so much. But again, it takes a really long time to get to that point. So if you've just been painting for a few months, give yourself some space. You're not going to be ready to completely create, like have an original, like, how do I say this? Like have a style that's yours that is defined right away. It takes a lot of time to get there. So don't stress about that. Really just enjoy this part. My style is similar to an eight-year-old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and um, we're waiting for this to dry. Oh, gotcha. This is a drying time. That's gotcha. why I like <laughs> stop. I like stop painting. I'm like, let's talk about this for a little bit. No, we're waiting for this to dry. <laughs> okay, I think this is dry enough that we can do our next layer. So I'm taking my pencil, and now you can see that the purple leaves are now what I'm starting to draw in. So it looks like I've done four, um, but I did some smaller ones peeking out here and there. So, and this is where maybe a pen would be helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think I just used a pencil when I made this project, but I wanna make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm not entirely sure how this pen will look on this painting, but that's gonna be okay. 
it's more important that you guys see what I'm doing. We're about to find out. We're about to find out real quick how this works. So this where is where it gets tricky because you have to work your way around these other leaves. And what I like to do is, let's say I'm drawing a leaf that's um, behind another leaf. I'll just lift my pen up. So I'll start the leaf, lift my pen up, continue the shape, then on the other side of the leaf, keep going with that leaf, okay? Because don't draw through the white leaf because that will be seen. We don't paint over that part, you know? It's getting tricky. Yeah. This is where it's starting to get a little bit tricky and confusing. Okay, so there's one. I'm gonna do one down here. Again, kind of overlapping that. I have a small one kind of poking up through here and here. Oh, I should leave my photo reference on the table so you guys can see that. It's fine, I've done this a lot. <laughs> We're professionals. We're professionals. Okay, so there's one. Then I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna do another one here. All right, now we're ready to paint our next layer, which if you're looking at this, it's this bluish layer, okay? So I'm gonna mix some space blue in with my orchid and a little bit of black, and I'm gonna try and get like a navy color. And I'm just going to work my way around. Now this is where you need to start paying attention to values as well because I want to make sure that this is light enough that if I do another layer, you can still see it. Where if this is too dark, I won't be able to like draw and paint another layer on there because it's too dark. Like that new layer won't be seen. You know what I mean? I think so. And uh, okay, here, like for example, if I just do straight, like as much paint as I possibly can or straight Payne's gray, excuse me, it's Payne's gray, not black. And I paint this area. If I were to paint another layer on top of that, you wouldn't be able to tell because yeah. of how dark that value is. But if I do this, where it's darker than what's there, but I can still darken it with another layer, that's where you wanna be. Got it. Okay. Check. So just add a little bit of water if maybe the first time you lay that color down. If it's just too dark, just blend it out with a little bit of water. Or you might get to a spot where you're like, actually, I feel good with this being the last layer, actually. I don't need to do a layer on top of that. That's fine, too. I kind of debated doing the one more layer when I was creating this project, like that black layer, because I thought the blue was really nice. The blue is nice. So if you want to stop after this one, you absolutely have that right. This is your painting. You're the artist here. You're the creator. Also, I don't think we've ever done this many like full on painted layers mm -mm. in a project before. So this is a great, this is a great workout for your paper. I was just gonna, yeah. 
If you're if you're stretching that. Yeah, if you're interested to see what your paper can handle and um, if you have other types of paper and if you're interested in this kind of painting or doing lots of layers like this, this is a great project to test that and see, okay, how far can I really push this, you know? I do know. <laughs> Kenan's like, I know exactly what you mean. I'm here for it. Again, I'm kind of using the tip of my six for this if you need to use your round two to get these little tiny detail parts. Go for it. There's Oscar. Oscar's back. Hello, Oscar. See how that purple's poking out now from around it? Yep. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to see it peek through, you know? Was that what you were mentioning before, or was, were you saying you were going to do that around the leaves? Yeah, I think before I was talking about if I were to, like, see how there's kind of pink... Yeah. There, if I were to like purposely do that all around all of them, and so you can see all those different layers of color, I thought that would be kind of cool, but I didn't do it. Yeah, that's right. That's I thought that's what it was. I thought you decided not to do a cool thing. <laughs> yeah, remember you yelled at me. <laughs> Okay, I accidentally painted over my stem on the pink. I'm just going to lift it up. Again, it's not a huge deal. Just keep on going. This is also a great project if you want to get more familiar with your paintbrush as well. Just in terms of how to hold it to get in tiny areas or fill in spaces quicker. Some people have asked me if there's a correct way to hold your paintbrush. I don't think so. I just think you need to hold it however is comfortable for you. Um, is there an incorrect way to hold your, your paintbrush? I almost said toothbrush. <laughs> um, I, I mean, like, I've taken some watercolor classes before and just my general paint classes, and I don't remember there being a stress on how to paint hold your brushes. Um, that doesn't mean that there isn't one, though. You know what I mean? It could just mean that maybe... My teacher didn't think that that was important to share or they, you know what I mean? Like yeah. people have different views of how things should be done. And um, in my experience, I haven't noticed if like holding it, you know, like this instead of like with the pencil matters. But if you found that to be different, that's okay. I'm not saying that I'm right, you know? Probably just means that if you hold it in a way that is actually uncomfortable to you, that's wrong for you. Yeah. There's not a specific way to hold it. I 
space blue. I wonder if this would work with, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't. I was just thinking of other paint mediums, like acrylic or gouache or. Yeah, why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? If yeah. anything, it might work. Well, I guess it depends on what you're trying to do, I guess. Hmm. Like, because the nice thing about watercolor is the transparency, right? So maybe if you're trying to make it really obvious of the transparent layers, watercolor is a really great way to, um, like a great medium to use for this. Yeah. If you want to focus on like opaque layers and just layering in general, then I'm wondering if like acrylic would be better. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be as fun though because acrylic is like, of course you paint something on top of it and it's covered. You know it's what like I mean? A, it's like a given for acrylic. Yeah. It might make it easier. Yeah. Or maybe if you want that like last layer to be super um, like dark and have no variation in the, the value or in the color, I wonder if you could just use like gouache, like black gouache or black acrylic on top of it or like just a solid color in general. Mm -hmm. You I could also with acrylic work from darks to lights versus light to dark. Oh yeah, with acrylic you could just like paint the background and then do Yeah. do a layer on top of it. Also, watercolor has different drying times. When things dry, it tends to lighten up. Um, so if you're feeling like some areas are looking lighter than others, it could just be because some areas are still wet while some are dried. That's normal too. But again, just as long as you're getting a different value or color than this purple that we're covering, your job is done. You know? Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Now getting like in these areas where it's nice and tight, those are harder. I'm actually going to switch to my two for, well, I kind of already did the hard part, but. And you can also really utilize your two to get the shape of your stem down nice, that kind of stuff. I see you found a LMA round two. I did. I found one. It was just where all the brushes are. <laughs> it was just where it belongs. It was where exactly where I was looking. <laughs> Switch to my bigger brush since I'm doing this big chunk over here. We're almost done, and then we just have one last layer to do. You can also do more layers on top of this. It just depends on like where your values are at. So I, I know that I could probably make room for one more darker value on top of this. And then after that, I mean, I guess it depends on how it dries. I'll know if like I need to do more or if it's done. 
you don't have to go to the darkest value. Like you don't have to go to all black. We could have stopped halfway through this and it still would be just as cool. So don't feel like your, your darkest value has to be black. It doesn't have to be. You can stop or keep going. It's up to you. What if it was red? What do you mean? What if you didn't do the final, like the final as the darkest? What if you just made it red? Would it be completely crazy? Well, because watercolor is transparent, if I were to do red on top of this, yeah. you wouldn't really be able to tell it's red because the underneath color is not white. That makes sense. So if you wanted to use like a red gouache, you could, or like an opaque paint, you could do that. Hmm. But in terms of values, the red, where red is naturally as a value, even if you only grab red, is not darker than this, so it would not show up. That makes sense. Okay. 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 Now we wait for that to dry, and we're gonna do. I'm gonna do one more um, leaf section, and then I'm gonna use mostly Payne's gray to paint that last layer. And you can put your leaves wherever. My left side is totally dry, so I'm gonna go in and put in my leaves here. And what I have noticed is if you want to make your paintings like paint less when you're doing the layering part, make your leaves really big. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Cause that's just less painting. Or you can make them small if you really want to like finish it off with a nice thick layer. Again, this is freehand. It's up to you. There's no right or wrong, my friends. Just try something, you know? I'm going to do one here. This might still be a little bit too wet to draw on, but I think that's okay. All right. It's dry over here, so I'm gonna start here. It's still wet over there, so, but by the time I make my way across, it should be good to go. I'm gonna use just Payne's Gray. Maybe a little bit of blue if you want. And here we go. is very therapeutic yeah I can tell that my energy level is just like ah yeah calm You might experience a little bit of fuzziness because I am using a lot of paint. And sometimes you get those fuzzy edges if you're just using so much paint as opposed to water. But I don't mind a fuzzy edge once in a while, you know? I, I okay. I'm torn because I like the fuzzy edge because it makes me think it's a little more like a feathered mm. and kind of like dreamily. Mm -hmm. But I love a hard edge because it's crispy yeah. and clean. I think there's value to both. Yes. Probably just depends on what you're going for. Yeah. And it's okay to like to like one other one over the I other. I can like both. You can absolutely like both. Perfect. Then I don't have a preference. What if like in our watercolor group we had this like really intense question and if they answered it wrong we're like no like we were like do you like sharp edges or fuzzy edges and they're like fuzzy and we're like you don't belong here <laughs> wait do you like sharp edges or fuzzy edges no wrong answer get out <laughs> we're not like that not at all although i am very passionate about food mm -hmm. um yes so like 
Sarah and I disagree on several desserts. Yeah, what was it? What was our last one? Fast breaks. Fast breaks. Keenan was trying to tell me that fast breaks are, breaks are better than like Reese's, like regular Reese's. And I'm like, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Okay. I never said that. I do think that they're 100% better than the Reese's Pieces. Okay, Reese's Pieces have the most satisfying they're, crunch texture. They're disgusting. <sighs> Kenan? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs> I just realized with the fast break, I don't love the nougat texture that's in there. That's what ties it together. I just feel like it makes it taste kind of old. I disagree. Well, we just... Do you like crunchy or soggy cereal? Crunchy. That's why. That's why you don't like the nougat. Oh, I'm sorry. You like soggy cereal? <laughs> you know like a cinnamon toast crunch? Kenan, I'm about to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I let it sit there for a few seconds so it's nice and soft. You cannot be serious. I'm dead serious. I can no longer trust any decision your palate makes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh. Hiding in plain sight this entire time. Hide and seek, I thought it was about these leaves. Really, it's about Keenan liking soggy cereal. What's up with that? Oh, that's hilarious. Wow. I am so Disheveled. amazed. I, I'm amazed Disheveled. that I didn't know that. I'm <laughs> flabbergasted that we've never talked about this before. Yeah. We even had a cereal well, snack off at work and nary a mention of soggy cereal happened. Oh, that's funny. I, uh, yeah, I just, the, the heart like Captain Crunch I like it when it's soft because it doesn't hurt my mouth and then I can eat more of it. You know, my little sister's actually that way. Huh. Um, I remember growing up, she'll pour her cereal and then like let it sit on the counter for a bit and like go get dressed. And I've just never, well one, when she first did that, I'm like, who are you? <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? I didn't know that other people did that. If you also like doing that, I'm really sorry if I just made you feel bad. I just can't relate because I love crunchy cereal. I actually am really particular about my milk and cereal ratio because of how much I don't like soggy cereal. So you have less milk? No, I don't have less milk. I have the perfect amount of milk. So you have not enough milk <laughs> in your bowl? I purposely pour my milk. It is a skill. I have one bite of just milk left at the end of cereal. Are you serious? I am totally serious. I drink like half a glass of milk at the end. That's too much milk. Well, no, you like it soggy. I like it soggy. And I like milk. I mean, I like milk too. And it's kind of... But I just usually have like one last sip of milk at the end. And it's like so sweet because it's been sitting in sugar cereal. You know? I do. I usually don't drink that milk. You don't drink that Correct. milk? Correct. I drink, because I let it settle, and I drink the milk off the top, and then there's probably two to three spoonfuls of milk left when I clean out my bowl. Wow. I know. So different, you and I. Just so you guys know, we've been repeating the same steps this entire time, so I hope you feel like I didn't abandon you to talk about cereal with Kenan. Yeah. It's more just keep doing what we've been doing this whole time. I'm working my way around my plants, my leaves, adding that last layer of color. And please let us know how you feel about cereal. Are you someone who enjoys it soggy? Maybe we should make a poll. Maybe we should make a poll. It's probably going to be majority crispy cereal. Yeah, because we're right. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm letting people see the side of me that's yeah. super passionate about food. Yeah, seriously. I always remember the story about Brock going shopping with you, and you went down the snack aisle and just grabbed whatever you saw. It was... <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just really appreciate food, and so it's just like if I feel like Oreos and Cheez-Its and goldfish one night, I'm going to grab all three, and I'm going to eat all three. But I don't do that every night, just so you guys know. I also eat healthy food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. The it's picture just, I'm painting is that you only eat bad snacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny actually with, I mean, I do love me some Oreo Thins. I oh, mean, yeah. talk okay. about a favorite unhealthy snack. I had never snack. had an Oreo Thin until you suggested it. And it is a... They are delightful. They're so good. They're like the perfect crunch cookie, I feel. Texture on point. Mm -hmm. They're good. Um... But with when I was pregnant with Arlo, I only craved fresh fruit and vegetables. That's all I wanted was just fresh produce. And since then, um, I haven't felt the same way about like snacks because it's still kind of there where I just, I'm like, give me a fresh cucumber or like, you know, strawberry. That's what I've been. I don't know. <laughs> Keenan's like, I can't relate to that at all. I heard Oreo thins. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cucumber yeah, slice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thin. there. I'm there. I'm there. It's just kind of funny how things taste change and, you know. That's true. I didn't used to like tomatoes. Oh, gosh. I love a good tomato. Then I started to grow, and I couldn't get enough food, so then I just realized I liked everything. Oh, when you were younger, you didn't like tomatoes? Yeah. And then you had one? Yeah, because I went, yeah, so, so my growth spurt was extreme. So I went, like, fr from 5'1 to 5'10 in less than a year and a half. No way! Yeah. So, me too. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know this about me because I'm always sitting down, but I'm actually really tall. <laughs> I'm not. I wish I was. That would be amazing. <laughs> what if I was like six feet tall? <laughs> In my dreams, I'm five three. That's Our how camera, tall I am. Uh, tripod is actually on seven books. She's too tall for the set. <laughs> this is a custom made desk <laughs> <Yes>. height. <laughs> no, I'm actually really short. I'm just teasing. Anyways, you had a very extreme growth mm -hmm. spurt, and it made me very hungry. And that's when I realized that it doesn't matter what I eat. I just need food. So I liked, I started to like onions. I started like mustard. I started like tomatoes. Mm. I tried different foods, grilled. You know, like grilled onions were good. Yeah. And now I love those things. So I'm glad I grew because I never would have tried other foods. That is, isn't it funny how when you're a kid, you're like so anti some foods mm -hmm. like when I was a kid and if there was even a whisper of mustard on my cheeseburger I was like I am not eating this even if I like wipe off the mustard it's not the same it's not the same I was so picky and now I really enjoy mustard yeah my girls I just asked them to try it that's all it is because most of the time sometimes Luna especially she's my younger one she's five she, if she decides she doesn't like something, even her taking a bite, she won't eat it. But I just want to keep introducing them to those foods and making them try stuff mm -hmm. and let them know that it's okay to change their mind. Because sometimes we get so stuck when we're younger that our taste buds change. And we don't realize it because we never gave that food a chance again, you know? True. To be fair, I do know some adults that still don't like vegetables. Yeah. I mean, my husband doesn't like tomatoes. He likes tomato product, but just like the texture of tomatoes, he's not a huge fan of. Yeah. Where like, I could eat a tomato by itself from the garden with just salt and pepper, and I'm good. That's Everybody's not, different. That's not tasty. Really? I like it on sandwiches and burgers. Oh, so you don't like just tomatoes by no, itself? especially, it's just too risky because sometimes you have one that's not ripe, and mm. so it's sourish. Well, if you get it from the garden, wait, where are you getting your tomatoes, Keenan? I don't know. Like okay. Cherry tomatoes? I just want to let you know that there is a huge store. difference between 
store-bought tomatoes and garden-grown tomatoes. Well, yes, I understand that. No, but like <laughs> huge difference. No, yes, I understand. The Okay, so growing up, we always had a garden. Okay. Didn't like tomatoes, so I never ate any. But when I started to grow and ate tomatoes, I enjoyed tomatoes from the garden. I don't like cherry tomatoes sometimes because it's risky. Oh, from the garden. Because you don't know if they're like ripe yet. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. But now I want salsa. Like green salsa. Yeah. My dad makes a really good salsa. I like a pico style salsa. I love the range of topics that we have covered during this painting. <laughs> You have to remember, it is lunchtime currently. It is. So food is the one we're on now. I just hope that some people are like, stop with they're gonna the start, tomatoes. They're going to mute us and check every five minutes to see if we're done talking about I don't blame them. Food. I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I'm just making, like, I'm on my home stretch now. You can kind of see um, my different layers, my different values. I'm almost done with this. And again, you guys can really make this your own. You can change up the colors. You can add more layers. You can, you can change the shape. You can do so many things with this project. And it's really therapeutic. I know I said that quite a few times, but it is. And again, it's a great lesson in value. It's a great lesson in colors. Um, so, you know, branch out. That was kind of a pun. That was nice. <laughs> well played. Thank you. And then I also have to, like, look back and make sure there aren't any tiny little sections. Oh, here's one that I forgot to paint. This one I'm going to define the stem a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to take off the tape. Nice. Which is one of my favorite parts. So, when you take off tape, you want to start, obviously on the piece that's on top, you want to start closest to the edge and pull away slowly. And the point of this pulling away is that if for whatever reason, if your tape does rip the paper, it will hopefully rip away from your painting and not into it. Oh, I saw a really interesting tip, Keenan. Continue. Somebody said that if you warm your tape up with a heat gun or a hair dryer before you remove it, it will not tear your paper. I haven't tried that, but I've seen that tip like by two or three different people. So I'm guessing. That's a great idea. Yeah. It says it kind of like softens the yep. adhesive. So if you're really struggling with your paper tearing, maybe warm it up a little bit before you That's try and take it idea. off. That's a great idea. Yeah. Wow. People are so smart. I know. I love people. And I love learning new things. Oh, yeah. Those are some nice clean edges. I love corners. Yeah. Corners are my favorite. Corner brownies. Oh, look at that. Oh, corners corner of brownies. Paintings. That's good. Yes. Look at that. Yes. Okay. I really hope you guys enjoyed this project had fun with it i know it took a little bit longer than maybe you were used to and a lot of layers but it's good to try new things i hope you had fun just listening to me and keenan talk <laughs> about food as you can tell we really care about it <laughs> <laughs> um, but i can't wait to see what you guys have come up with for this project you can tag us on instagram at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art you can share in our watercolor group that we created just so you guys can share what you're making that's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. And if you need any of these supplies or this kit, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. 
Um, and I think that's all I gotta say. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.